All right, number 10. Uh, while in initial discussions with a new client, you hear that they have had issues in the past with large overruns of costs. Um, that has caused them uh, problems with their funders. The funders are getting nervous because uh, they have uh, had these problems in the past. Uh, so therefore, you may want to suggest that they look into blank as a project delivery system. So project delivery system is a term you should absolutely know. Uh, when I say design, bid, build, where the architect is given the project to design a pro to design this building, and then at the end of that design, you hand it out to, to uh, general contractors and they bid on it. You have bidders who bid on it. And then uh, you and the owner make a decision over which bidder is going to become the actual GC on this project. And so a bidder is chosen. And then it goes into the building phase, design, bid, build. It takes a long time, but it has certain advantages. Um, that would be a project delivery system. That would be the way that you're going to get through the project. Another way you could imagine doing it is through something like design build, uh, where uh, the architect and the contractor are actually one entity. They can be one entity in all sorts of different ways. It could be a contractor who hires an architect, it could be an architect who hires a, a contractor, it could be just people who like doing both. Um, design build is a very different project delivery system. If I have a design build, it changes everything. It changes all the contracts, it changes all the relationships. Uh, instead of having um, the architect be sort of the agent of the owner, there's now this very different relationship of the architect to the owner because the architect is now allied with the construction process, not with the owner. So there's certain advantages to the owner and there's certain disadvantages to the owner. So this idea of project delivery, uh, it is a core part of project management of understanding what drawings you need to produce, of understanding what the relationships are, of understanding what contracts uh, you would sign. They all depend on, on what sort of project delivery system you're going to choose. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the things that we have here. We have uh, a feasibility study, C is definitely not it. That is just a red herring to throw you off. Uh, the possible answers then are A, B, or D. A, construction management. Uh, B, design, bid, build, and D, fast track. So those are three different project delivery systems. Um, design, bid, build, as I just said, is that kind of longer one where you have the design, then you do the bid, and then there's the construction. The big advantages of design, bid, build uh, are that uh, I get to the, uh, get to the end process, uh, you know, I get to about here, uh, and when I've got that bid and I've got the, the GC about to start, and I actually have a pretty good understanding of that dollar value. Uh, up to that point, it may be a little loose uh, because you're counting on the architect to uh, do the bidding, not, uh, not a general contractor. Uh, fast track is this kind of great system that says, uh, okay, we're really all about speed because maybe school is gonna start and we gotta build it over the summer or maybe you're building a stadium and the team is going to start playing in September or uh, the financing is going to be changing and so you just really want to get the project done right away or the site just costs a lot and you want to get it moving. So fast track is when speed is of the essence and in that case what you're doing is uh, the architects are providing a package that is let's say all about the uh, uh, foundation and then while uh, they finish that, they hand that over and the contractors start building the foundation. And then while, they're, while that's happening, the architect is now doing, let's say, the uh, steel, uh, uh, steel structural system. And they finish that package, they hand that over to contractors and the contractors start building that right away. Uh, and then uh, they hand over the shell and the, uh, all of the other things, uh, the sort of uh, basic floor plans and everything that fit into this as a system. And then they hand that over and that starts getting built right away. So that these things are, are built in these uh, very fast stages where you are designing while it's being built. So fast track is a very unusual, very interesting way to do it. Uh, and it's kind of a crazy, great, fast, nutty system but it's also absolutely a terrible way to control dollars. The dollars are always gonna be higher uh, when you do fast track because there's just no way you can think of all the issues back when you started doing that, uh, that foundation package. You, you just can't think of every issue that would show up in one of the packages later on in the, in the process. So fast track, kind of fascinating, it has its place, uh, but it's definitely not a good place to control the dollars. 
Um, the main reason that you would do fast track is because you actually believe that, yes, I'm going to lose money on this as a project because I know there's going to be things we have to redo as we go along, but that that amount of money, let's say I lose $200,000 in this as a process, but maybe I save $500,000 because I've got the building up and running faster, right? So there's times when it actually is financially logical, but it's not about saving money on uh, overruns or anything like that. So then the only one left here is really between design, bid, build, and construction management. And construction management, the idea of construction management is that you actually have somebody from the ownership who comes in during SD and starts talking to the architects about the pricing. And so they're giving uh, dollar information uh, from the construction manager. They're essentially, not actually, but essentially an employee of the owner. To, to you, they're an employee of the owner. They actually don't have to be an actual employee. There could be lots of different ways that they run. But that you think of them, they're on the owner's team, if you will. So they come in and they give help give estimates at that point. And then they do it again at DD, right? So they're giving you money um, uh, through the construction manager. And then by the time you get done with the CDs, now they're actually uh, organizing all the subs um, and they're bringing all the subs in. But it's, uh, it's a different set of relationships than with a GC because they're bringing them in it's kind of uh, for the owner, if you will. Um, so if you were an owner that was really worried about past overruns, uh, I could totally imagine telling, uh, a potential, telling that potential client that they should really move to a construction manager system uh, because that's a, one of the givens of a construction manager is that you get a lot of early information and continuous information about what the costs are going to be. The big disadvantage is the big advantage of the design bid build is that I go through this big long process, but I also have bid it out to many different contractors. And so I actually do get a very clear idea of which is the low bidder. Uh, but as we said in one of the earlier questions, I also often get to a situation where I get to the end of the bidding and it's just all too expensive. And now we have to go back and start again and redo the drawings and go through the bid again. So while I have, have certain advantages of getting the low bid from the design bid build, there's a bunch of disadvantages as well. Um, so in this scenario, really the best answer is uh, to suggest that they do uh, construction management. And there you are. There's our, our 10 questions. Uh, it gets us sort of a good uh, starting point into the kinds of topics that uh, will show up on the PPP. There's a bunch of other things we could talk about, precedent issues, things like that. But this kind of gives you that sense of the types of things about practice management, about uh, the early stages of a project, about understanding uh, how the site impacts these decisions, about project delivery and, uh, and all of that. I think that gives you a pretty good sense of the sort of range that we're talking about. Okay, so um, at this point we'll take any questions. Does anyone have any questions? If you do, you can use the um, GoToWebinar uh, question box. So we'll just take a second here and see if anyone has any questions. Uh, Michael is noting that uh, he thinks it really seems like there's a lot of overlap with CDNS uh, for this specific exam. Yeah, the, so I, I, I'm a little heavy on the CDNS on this, um, uh, but like I said early on, you have to think of it from the, the vantage point that you're looking at it. The reason that it's sort of heavy is that PPP focuses a lot on the early phases of a project. You're kind of gathering the information, you're getting ready to roll forward, you're uh, figuring out how the project, the project management, how it's going to play out, who, this, who the team is. Um, and when you, when you talk about that, there's a lot of sort of contract-esque contract uh, stuff uh, built into that. Um, but you're talking about it from not so much the legal standpoint, but from the practice management or the project management aspect. Um, the other thing from a practice management, we could have gone deep into, I sort of just left it with the pro forma, um, but we could have spent a lot of time talking about uh, billable hours and uh, kind of the, the different setup of, of um, uh, ways that you do billing and how you start to kind of think about how much time goes into SD versus goes into DD, those kinds of things. Um, those are all part of that milieu. Uh, but like I said, it's the, there's a lot of overlap, but you're looking at it from these different vantage points. Thank you, Mike. 
Uh, and thanks to all of you who've tuned in. And if you'd like to attend our next ARE live broadcast, visit blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register. Uh, you'll have a chance to ask questions and share your answers with Mike for live feedback during the broadcast, just like today. Um, and to learn more about our AIA ARE prep curriculum, go to blackspectacles.com. Uh, we'll uh, include, a note, uh, include a link in the show notes. Uh, and for those of you who are ready and, and want to go ahead and get busy preparing for the ARE, uh, you can use a coupon, uh, a 15% coupon off the first charge on any AIA ARE prep membership with code 527-115-WEBINAR. That's 527-15-WEBINAR. Uh, and that'll expire on June 15th. Um, and of course, if you're already an AIA member, you can visit AIA.org slash ARE prep to get a 30% discount for the entire duration of your AIA ARE prep membership, not just the first charge. Um, and that also uh, expires on June 15th. Um, and finally, uh, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think um, and share any suggestions um, that you may have. I promise uh, we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. Uh, so thanks for watching. <laughs>